CIET NCERT presents Contemporary India The audio textbook in geography for class 10 part 2 Chapter 6 Manufacturing Industries This chapter has 16 pages Page 65 Chapter 6 Manufacturing Industries Manufacturing Industries Friends Let us begin this chapter with an event. On the occasion of Diwali, Harish went to a market with his parents. They purchased shoes and clothes for him. His mother purchased utensils, sugar, tea and diyas. These are the earthen lamps. Harish observed that the shops in the market were flooded with items for sale. He wondered how so many items could be made in such large quantities his father explained that shoes clothes sugar etc are manufactured by machines in large industries some utensils are manufactured in small industries while items like diyas are made by individual artisans in household industry do you have some ideas about these industries Now from the text Production of goods in large quantities after processing from raw materials to more valuable products is called manufacturing Do you know that paper is manufactured from wood sugar from sugarcane iron and steel from iron ore and aluminum from bauxite Do you also know that some types of clothes are manufactured from yarn which itself is an industrial product People employed in the secondary activities manufacture the primary materials into finished goods The workers employed in steel factories car breweries textile industries bakeries etc fall into this category Some people are employed in providing services. In this chapter, we are mainly concerned with manufacturing industries which fall in the secondary sector. The economic strength of a country is measured by the development of manufacturing industries. Importance of manufacturing. Manufacturing sector is considered the backbone of development in general and economic development in particular mainly because first manufacturing industries not only help in modernizing agriculture which forms the backbone of our economy they also reduce the heavy dependence of people on agricultural income by providing them jobs in secondary and tertiary sectors second industrial development is a precondition for eradication of unemployment and poverty from our country this was the main philosophy behind public sector industries and joint sector ventures in india it was also aimed at bringing down regional disparities by establishing industries in tribal and backward areas third Export of manufactured goods expands trade and commerce and brings in much needed foreign exchange. Fourth, countries that transform their raw materials into a wide variety of furnished goods of higher value are prosperous. India's prosperity lies in increasing and diversifying its manufacturing industries as quickly as possible. Agriculture and industry are not exclusive of each other. They move hand in hand. For instance, the agro industry in India have given a major boost to agriculture by raising its productivity. They depend on the latter for raw materials and sell their products such as irrigation pumps, fertilizers, insecticides, pesticides, plastic and PVC pipes, machines and tools etc to the farmers. Thus development and competitiveness of manufacturing industry has not only assisted agriculturalists in increasing their production but also made the production processes very efficient In the present day world of globalization our industry needs to be more efficient and competitive 
self sufficiency alone is not enough our manufactured goods must be at par in quality with those in the international market only then we will be able to compete in the international market page 66 contribution of industry to national economy over the last two decades the share of manufacturing sector has stagnated at 17% of gdp out of a total of 27% of the industry which includes 10% for mining quarrying electricity and gas this is much lower in comparison to some east asian economies where it is 25 to 35% the trend of growth rate in manufacturing over the last decade has been around 7% per annum the desired growth rate over the next decade is 12% since 2003 Manufacturing is once again growing at the rate of 9 to 10% per annum with appropriate policy interventions by the government and the renewed efforts by the industry to improve productivity economists predict that manufacturing can achieve its target over the next decade the national manufacturing competitiveness council that is nmcc has been set up with this objective industrial location industrial locations are complex in nature these are influenced by availability of raw material labor capital power and market etc it is rarely possible to find all these factors available at one place consequently manufacturing activity tends to locate at the most appropriate place where all the factors of industrial location are either available or can be arranged at lower cost after an industrial activity starts urbanization follows sometimes industries are located in or near the cities thus industrialization and urbanization go hand in hand Cities provide markets and also provide services such as banking, insurance, transport, labor, consultants and financial advice etc to the industry. Many industries tend to come together to make use of the advantages offered by the urban centers known as agglomeration economies. Gradually a large industrial agglomeration takes place. In the pre-independence period most manufacturing units are located in places from the point of view of overseas trade such as Mumbai Kolkata Chennai etc consequently there emerged certain pockets of industrially developed urban centers surrounded by a huge agricultural rural hinterland figure 6.1 Here it shows a flow diagram of industry and market linkage. The inputs, raw material and all component parts, factors of production, land, labor, capital, entrepreneur, infrastructure, all depends upon the transport. Transport feeds the factories. and gives the outputs that is the production again the output that is the manufactured goods are transported to the market and the money that we get out of the whole of this process goes back again and completes the cycle of manufacturing the key to decision of the factory location is the least cost government policies and specialized labor also influence the location of industry figure 6.2 explains the ideal location of the industry the ideal location of the industry depends upon the four factors cost of obtaining raw materials at site 
cost of distribution of production decision to locate factory at site and cost of production at site page 67 classification of industries list the various manufactured products you use in your daily life such as transistors electric bulbs vegetable oil cement glassware petrol matches scooters automobiles medicines and so on if we classify the various industries based on a particular criteria then we would be able to understand their manufacturing better industries may be classified as follows on the basis of source of raw materials used first agro based industry cotton woolen jute silk textile rubber and sugar tea coffee edible oil the mineral based industries iron and steel cement aluminium machine tools and petrochemicals according to their main role we can divide the industries into two categories first basic or key industries which supply their products or raw materials to manufacture other goods example iron and steel and copper smelting aluminum smelting and the second consumer industries that produce goods for direct use by consumers sugar toothpaste paper sewing machines fans etc on the basis of capital investment we have a small scale industry which is defined with reference to the maximum investment allowed on the assets of a unit this limit has changed over a period of time at present the maximum investment allowed is rupees 1 crore on the basis of ownership public sector public sector owned and operated by government agencies like bhel sail etc private sector industries owned and operated by individuals or a group of individuals examples tisco tisco bajaj auto limited dabur industries joint sector industries which are jointly run by the state and individuals or a group of individuals oil india limited is jointly owned by public and private sector that is oil cooperative sector industries are owned and operated by the producers or suppliers of raw materials workers or both they pool in the resources and share the profits or losses proportionately such as the sugar industry in maharashtra and coir industry in kerala based on the bulk and weight of raw material and finished goods we can classify industries into two first heavy industries such as iron and steel and second light industries that use light raw materials and produce light goods such as electrical industries activity classify the following into two groups on the basis of bulk and weight of raw material and finished goods first oil second knitting needles third brassware fourth fuse wires fifth watches sixth sewing machines seven ship building eighth electric bulbs nine paint brushes and 10 automobiles agro based industries cotton jute silk woolen textiles sugar and edible oil etc industries are based on agricultural raw materials page 68 textile industry the textile industry occupies unique position in indian economy because it contributes significantly to industrial production that is 14% employment generation 35 million persons directly the second largest after agriculture the foreign exchange earnings 
that is about 24.6%. It contributes 4% towards GDP. It is the only industry in the country which is self-reliant and complete in the value chain, that is, from raw material to the highest value-added products. Figure 6.3. The given flowchart explains the value addition in textile industry. Fiber production is done with the help of raw fiber. After weaving and knitting, we get the final product, that is the fabric. After dyeing the finished product, that is the fabric, we make garments out of it. And the garments are manufactured. Together, it gives a final product. Cotton textiles. In ancient India, cotton textiles were produced with hand spinning and hand loom weaving techniques. After the 18th century, power looms came into use. Our traditional industry suffered a setback during the colonial period because they could not compete with the mill-made cloth from England. From the box. The first successful textile mill was established in Mumbai in 1854. Two world wars were fought in Europe. India was a British colony. There was a demand for cloth in UK. Hence, they gave a boost to the development of the cotton textile industry. Now, from the text. As on 30th November 2011, there are 1,946 cotton and human-made fibre textile mills in the country. About 80% of these are in private sector and the rest in the public and cooperative sectors. Apart from these, there are several thousand small factories with four to ten looms. In the early years, the cotton textile industry was concentrated in the cotton-growing belt of Maharashtra and Gujarat. Availability of raw cotton, market, transport, including accessible port facilities, labour, moist climate, etc., contributed towards its localization. This industry has close links with agriculture and provides a living to farmers, cotton ball pluckers and workers engaged in ginning, spinning, weaving, dyeing, designing, packaging, tailoring and sewing. The industry, by creating demand, supports many other industries such as chemicals and dyes, mill stores, packaging materials and engineering works. While spinning continues to be centralized in Maharashtra, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu, weaving is highly decentralized to provide scope for incorporating traditional skills and designs of weaving in cotton, silk, zari embroidery, etc. India has world-class production in spinning. But weaving supplies low quality of fabric as it cannot use much of the high quality yarn produced in the country. Weaving is done by hand loom, power loom and in mills. The hand spun khadi provides large scale employment to weavers in their homes as a cottage industry. Why did Mahatma Gandhi lay emphasis on spinning yarn and weaving khadi? Figure 4.2. The table gives us the statistics of the production of fabrics in India. It shows the three sectors, the mill sector, the power looms in hoisery, the hand looms and others. And the production it shows for 2009 and 10 and the second column. It shows the production for 2010 and 11. So mill sector gave the production of 3.3% in 2009-2010, whereas 35 in 2010 and 2011. Power looms, that is in hoisery, contributed 84.1% in both, that is in 2009 and 10, and also in 2010 and 11. Handlooms, 2009-2010, 
its contribution was 11.3, which dropped a bit. And it became 11.1 in 2010-2011. Others remained at 1.3 in both the durations. Source Office of Textile Commissioner, Mumbai Economic Survey, 2011-2012 Note 90% of weaving, cutting and processing is in decentralized sector. Now from the text. Study the figures above and note the share of mills in the production of fabric. Why is it important for our country to keep the mill sector loomage lower than power loom and hand loom? India exports yarn to Japan. Other importers of cotton goods from India are USA, UK, Russia, France, East European countries, Nepal, Singapore, Sri Lanka and African countries. Page 69 The given map here shows the textile industries all over the country, India. The cotton textile industries are concentrated in the western part of our country, that is, Porbandar, Rajkot, Ahmedabad in Gujarat, Mumbai, Pune, Aurangabad, Jalgaon, Varda in Maharashtra, Indore, Devas and Ujjain in Madhya Pradesh. We also have Murshidabad, Havra and Hooghly in West Bengal whereas the woolen textile industries are located and are concentrated in the northern parts of India. Srinagar as one of the centres in Jammu and Kashmir, Amritsar and Ludhiana in Punjab, Panipat Gurgaon in Haryana, Agra, Kanpur, Mirzapur and Shahjanpur in Uttar Pradesh. The silk textile industries are found in Jammu and Kashmir, in Barabula and Anantnag, Bankura district and Murshidabad districts of West Bengal, Bengaluru, Kolar and Mysuru in Karnataka. We see the distribution of industries is not very even all over the country. And here the factors for the localization of the industry's work. Page 70 Now from the text. India has the second largest installed capacity for spindles in the world with 43.13 million spindles in 2011-2012 after China. Since the mid-80s, the spinning sector has received a lot of attention. We have a large share in the world trade of cotton yarn, accounting for one-fourth of the total trade. However, our trade in garments is only 4% of the world's total. Our spinning mills are competitive at the global level and capable of using all the fibres we produce. The weaving, knitting and processing units cannot use much of the high-quality yarn that is produced in the country. There are some large and modern factories in these segments, but most of the production is in fragmented small units which cater to the local market. This mismatch is a major drawback for the industry. As a result, many of our spinners export cotton yarn while apparel or garment manufacturers have to import fabric. From the text Why is it important for us to improve our weaving sector instead of exporting yarn in large quantities? Although we have made significant increase in the production of good quality long staple cotton that is 356 lakh bales of 170 kg each during 2011 and 2012, the need to import is still felt. Power supply is erratic and machinery needs to be upgraded in the weaving and processing sectors in particular. Other problems are the low output of labour, 
and stiff competition with the synthetic fiber industry. From the box, yarn is sold at rupees eighty-five per kg. If it is sold as a trouser, it fetches rupees eight hundred per kg. Value is added at every stage from fiber to yarn to fabric and to garment. Jute textiles. India is the largest producer of raw jute and jute goods and stands at second place as an exporter after Bangladesh. There were about 80 jute mills in India in 2010-2011. Most of these are located in West Bengal, mainly along the banks of the Hooghly River, in a narrow belt that is 98 km long and 3 km wide. From the box, the first jute mill was set up near Kolkata in 1859 at Rishra. After partition in 1947. The jute mills remained in India, but three fourths of the jute producing areas went to Bangladesh, erstwhile East Pakistan. From the text, factors responsible for their location in the Hooghly Basin are proximity of the jute producing areas, inexpensive water transport, supported by a good network of railways, roadways, and waterways to facilitate. movement of raw material to the mills abundant water for processing raw jute cheap labor from west bengal and adjoining states of bihar orissa and uttar pradesh kolkata as a large urban center provides banking insurance and port facilities for export of jute goods in 2010 2011 The jute industry was supporting 3.7 lakh workers directly and another 40 lakhs small and marginal farmers who were engaged in cultivation of jute and mesta Many more people were associated indirectly Challenges faced by the industry include stiff competition in the international market from the synthetic substitutes and from other competitors like Bangladesh, Brazil, Philippines, Egypt and Thailand. However, the internal demand has been on the increase due to the government policy of mandatory use of jute packaging. To stimulate demand, the products need to be diversified. In 2005, National jute policy was formulated with the objective of increasing productivity, improving quality, ensuring good prices to the jute farmers and enhancing the yield per hectare. The main markets are USA, Canada, Russia, United Arab Republic, UK and Australia. The growing global concern for environmental friendly biodegradable materials has once again opened the opportunity for jute products page 71 sugar industry india stands second as a world producer of sugar but occupies the first place in the production of good and kansari the raw material used in this industry is bulky and in haulage its sucrose content reduces where should the mills be ideally located in 2010 2011 there were over 662 sugar mills in the country spread over uttar pradesh bihar maharashtra karnataka tamil nadu andhra pradesh and gujarat along with punjab haryana and madhya pradesh 60% mills are in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. This industry is seasonal in nature, so it is ideally suited to be cooperative sector. Can you explain why this is so? In recent years, there is a tendency for a mills to shift and concentrate in the southern and western states, especially in Maharashtra. This is because the cane produced here has a higher sucrose content. The cooler climate also ensures a longer crushing season. Moreover, 
the cooperatives are more successful in these states. Major challenges include the seasonal nature of the industry, old and inefficient methods of production, transport delay in reaching cane to factories, and the need to maximize the use of bagasse. Mineral-based industries. Industries that use minerals and metals as raw materials are called mineral-based industries. Can you name some industries that would fall in this category? Iron and steel industry. The iron and steel industry is the basic industry since all the other industries that is heavy, medium and light depend on it for their machinery. Steel is needed to manufacture a variety of engineering goods, construction material, defense, medical, telephonic, scientific equipment and a variety of consumer goods. The activity. Make a list of all such goods made of steel that you can think of. Now from the text. Production and consumption of steel is often regarded as the index of country's development. Iron and steel is a heavy industry because all the industries as well as finished goods are heavy and bulky, entailing heavy transportation costs, iron ore, coking coal and limestone are required in the ratio of approximately 4 is to 2 is to 1. Some quantities of manganese are also required to harden the steel. Where should the steel plants be ideally located? Remember that the finished products also need an efficient transport network for their distribution to the markets and consumers. In 2010-2011, with 72.2 million tons of steel production, India ranked fourth among the world crude steel producers. It is the largest producer of sponge iron. In 2010-2011, per capita consumption of steel in the country was only around 49 kg per annum against the world average of 182 kg. Figure 6.4 The flow chart shows the process of manufacture of steel. The transportation of raw material to the plant and then in a blast furnace, iron ore is melted, limestone is fluxing material which is added, slag is removed, coke is burnt to heat the ore and then pig iron is obtained. The molten materials are poured into molds called pigs which then helps in making of steel where pig iron is further purified by melting and oxidizing the impurities. Manganese, nickel, chromium are added and then shaping the metal by rolling pressing, casting and forging. Page 72 The given political map of India shows the distribution of iron and steel industries. The distribution is uneven where we see the concentration of iron and steel industries in the region of West Bengal, that is Burnpur and Durgapur, Jamshedpur and Bokaro in Charkhan, Raul Kela in Orissa, Bhilai in Chhattisgarh, Vishakapatnam in Andhra Pradesh, Vijayanagar and Bhadravati in Karnataka, and Salem in Tamil Nadu. Page 73 Activity Total finished steel production in India. We have been given an yearly production in million tons per annum. In 2005, it was 45.7 million tons per annum. 2006, it was 49.4 million tons per annum. 2007, 53 million tons per annum. 2008, 
57.8 million tons per annum. 2009, 56.6 million tons per annum. 2010, 68.3 million tons per annum. And 2011, 72.2 million tons per annum. Source, Ministry of Steel, Government of India. Why is the per capita consumption of steel is low in India? The activity given here is to collect the information about steel plants located in your own state and show them on the map of India. There is a little information given here in the box. Mini steel plants are smaller, have electric furnaces, use steel scrap and sponge iron. They have re-rollers that use steel ingots as well. They produce mild and alloy steel of given specifications. An integrated steel plant is large, handles everything in one complex, from putting together raw material to steel making, rolling and shaping. From the text, most of the public sector undertakings market this steel through Steel Authority of India Limited, that is SAIL. In the 1950s, China and India produced almost the same quantity of steel. Today, China is the largest producer of steel. China is also the world's largest consumer of steel. In 2004, India was the largest exporter of steel, which accounted for 2.25% of the global steel trade. Churanagpur Plateau region has the maximum concentration of iron and steel industries. It is largely because of the relative advantages this region has for the development of this industry. These include low cost of iron ore, high grade raw materials in proximity, cheap labor and vast growth potential in the home market. Though India is an important iron steel producing country in the world, yet we are not able to perform to our full potential largely due to a high cost and limited availability of coking coal. B. Lower productivity of labor. C. Irregular supply of energy. And D. Poor infrastructure. Figure 6.5 Steel production in India and China Given here is a multiple bar diagram which is showing a comparison between India and China in the production of steel from the year 2005 to 2011. India's production shows marginal improvement as 45.7 in 2005 to only 72.2 in 2011. On the contrary, China shows a surge in its production as 355.7 in 2005 and 683.2 in 2011. Source World Steel Association website www.worldsteel.org We also import good quality steel from other countries. However, the overall production of steel is sufficient to meet our domestic demand. Liberalization and foreign direct investment have given a boost to the industry with the efforts to private entrepreneurs. There is a need to allocate resources for research and development to produce steel more computatively. Activity Have you read about the Kalanganagar controversy? Collect information from the different sources and discuss. Page 74 Aluminum smelting Aluminum smelting is the second most important metallurgical industry in India. It is light, resistant to corrosion, a good conductor of heat, malleable and becomes strong when it is mixed with other metals. 
It is used to manufacture aircraft, utensils and wires. It has gained popularity as a substitute of steel, copper, zinc and lead in a number of industries. Aluminium smelting plants in the country are located in Odisha, West Bengal, Kerala, Uttar Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. In 2008-2009, Inter produced over 15.29 lakh million tons of aluminium. Bauxite. The raw material used in the smelters is a very bulky, dark reddish coloured rock. The flow chart given below shows the process of manufacturing aluminium, regular supply of electricity and an assured source of raw material at minimum cost are the two prime factors for location of the industry. Figure 6.6. Here is given a picture which is showing strip casting mill at smelter of Nalco. Figure 6.7 gives us the information that 4 to 6 tons of bauxite gives us 2 tons of alumina which ultimately gives us just 1 ton of aluminum. Figure 6.8 Process of manufacturing of aluminum in industry The raw material required here is bauxite which is transported through train or waterways, bauxite crushed and aluminum dissolved out, aluminum refined and then bulk ore shipped to site of smelter, calcinated petroleum coke from a refinery and pitch from colliery. In an aluminum smelter, cryolite, a molten metal acts as electrolyte with the help of the electricity that is 18,600 kilowatt per ton of ore. All of this describes the manufacture of aluminum in an industry. This is a complex process. Page 75 Activity a factory produces aluminum saucepans with plastic handles. It obtains aluminum from a smelter and a plastic component from another factory. All the manufactured saucepans are sent to a warehouse. First, which raw material is likely to be most expensive to transport and why? Second, which raw material is likely to be the cheapest to transport and why? Second, do you think the cost of transporting the finished products after packaging is likely to be cheaper or more expensive than the cost of transporting aluminium and plastic? Why? Chemical Industries The chemical industry in India is fast growing and diversifying. It contributes approximately 3% of the GDP. It is the third largest in Asia and occupies the 12th place in the world in terms of its size. It comprises both large and small-scale manufacturing units. Rapid growth has been recorded in both inorganic and organic sectors. Inorganic chemicals include sulfuric acid, that is, used to manufacture fertilizers, synthetic fibers, plastics, adhesives, paints, dye stuffs, nitric acid, alkalis, soda ash that is used to make glass, soaps and detergents, paper, and caustic soda. These industries are widely spread over the country. Why do you think it is so? Organic chemicals include petrochemicals, which are used for manufacturing of synthetic fibre, synthetic rubber, plastics, dye stuffs, drugs and pharmaceuticals. Organic chemical plants are located near oil refineries or petrochemical plants. The chemical industry is its own largest consumer. 
basic chemicals undergo processing to further produce other chemicals that are used for industrial application agriculture or directly for consumer markets make a list of the products you are aware of fertilizer industry the fertilizer industry is centered around the production of nitrogenous fertilizers that is mainly urea phosphatic fertilizers and ammonium phosphate that is dap and complex fertilizers which have combination of nitrogen that is n phosphate that is depicted as p and potash that is written as k the third that is potash is entirely imported as the country does not have any reserve of commercially usable potash or potassium compounds in any form india is the third largest producer of nitrogenous fertilizers there are 57 fertilizer units manufacturing nitrogenous and complex nitrogenous fertilizers 29 for urea and 9 for producing ammonium sulfate as a byproduct and 68 other small units produce single superphosphate at present there are 10 public sector undertakings and one in cooperative sector at hazira in gujarat under the fertilizer cooperation of india after the green revolution the industry expanded to several other parts of the country Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Punjab and Kerala contribute towards half the fertilizer production. Other significant producers are Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, Rajasthan, Bihar, Maharashtra, Assam, West Bengal, Goa, Delhi, Madhya Pradesh and Karnataka. Cement industry. Cement is essential for construction activities such as building houses, factories, bridges, roads, airports, dams and for other commercial establishments. This industry requires bulky and heavy raw material like limestone, silica, alumina and gypsum. Coal and electric power are needed apart from rail transportation. The activity which is given here is where would it be economical viable to set up the cement manufacturing units and another activity which is given over here is find out where the plants are located in other states of india find their names now let us read from the text the industry has strategically located plants in gujarat that have suitable access to the market in the gulf countries the first cement plant was set up in chennai in 1904 after independence the industry expanded the control of price and distribution since 1989 the other policy reforms led the cement industry to make rapid strides in capacity process technology and production there are 128 large plants and 332 mini cement plants in the country india produces a variety of cement improvement in the quality has found the produce a readily available market in east asia middle east africa and south asia apart from a large demand within the country This industry is doing well in terms of production as well as export. Efforts are being made to generate adequate domestic demand and supply in order to sustain this industry. Page 76. Automobile industry. Automobiles provide vehicle for quick transport of goods, services and passengers. Trucks buses cars motorcycles scooters three wheelers and multi utility vehicles are manufactured in india at various centers after the liberalization the coming in of new and contemporary models stimulated the demand for vehicles in the market which led 
to the healthy growth of the industry, including passenger cars, two- and three-wheelers. This industry had experienced a quantum jump in less than 15 years. Foreign direct investment brought a new technology and aligned the industry with global developments. At present, there are 15 manufacturers of at present, there are 15 manufacturers of passenger cars and multi-utility vehicles, 9 of commercial vehicles, 14 of the 2 and 3 wheelers. The industry is located around Delhi, Gurgaon, Mumbai, Pune, Chennai, Kolkata, Lucknow, Indore, Hyderabad, Jamshedpur and Bangalore. Information Technology and Electronics Industry the electronics industry covers a wide range of products from transistor sets to television. Telephones, cellular telecom, pages, telephone exchange, radars, computers and many other equipments required by the telecommunication industry. Bangalore has emerged as the electronic capital of India. Other important centers for electronic goods are Mumbai, Delhi, Hyderabad, Pune, Chennai, Kolkata, Lucknow and Coimbatore. By 2010-2011, STPI, that is Software Technology Parks of India, have come up across 46 locations at different centres of India. However, the major industry concentration is at Bangalore, Noida, Mumbai, Chennai, Hyderabad and Pune. A major impact of this industry has been on employment generation. It is encouraging to know that 30% of the people employed in this sector are women. This industry has been a major foreign exchange earner in the last two or three years because of its fast growing business processing outsourcing sector, that is, BPO. The continuing growth in the hardware and software is the key to the success of IT industry in India. Figure 6.9 The picture shows the cable manufacturing facilities at HCL, Roop Narayanpur, West Bengal. Figure 6.10 A picture shows the gas turbine Rotor and assembly bed at BHEL. Page 77. Here is given a map of India which shows the distribution of some software technology parks in India. They are as follows Srinagar in Jammu and Kashmir, Mohali in Punjab, Noida in Uttar Pradesh. Jaipur in Rajasthan, Gandhinagar in Gujarat, Indore in Madhya Pradesh, Mumbai and Pune in Maharashtra, Hyderabad in Telangana, Vishakapatnam in Andhra Pradesh, Bhuvaneshwar in Odisha, Kolkata in West Bengal, Guwahati in Assam, Bangaluru and Mysuru in Karnataka, Chennai in Tamil Nadu and Tiruvanthapuram in Kerala. Industrial Pollution and Environmental Degradation Although industries contribute significantly to India's economic growth and development, the increase in pollution of land, water, air, noise and resulting degradation of environment that they have caused cannot be overlooked. Industries are responsible for four types of pollution. A. Air pollution B. Water pollution C. Land pollution and D. Noise pollution The polluting industries also include thermal power plants. Page 78 Air pollution Air pollution is caused by the presence of high proportion of undesirable gases such as sulfur dioxide and carbon monoxide. Airborne particulate materials contain both solid 
and liquid particles like dust, sprays, mist and smoke. Smoke is emitted by chemical and paper factories, brick kilns, refineries and smelting plants and burning of fossil fuels in big and small factories that ignore pollution norms. Toxic gas leaks can be very hazardous with long-term effects. Are you aware of the Bhopal gas tragedy that occurred? Air pollution adversely affects human health, animals, plants, buildings and the atmosphere as a whole. Water pollution Water pollution is caused by organic and inorganic industrial wastes and affluents discharged into rivers. The main culprits in this regard are paper, pulp, chemical, textile and dyeing, petroleum refineries, tanneries and electroplating industries that let out dyes, detergents, acids, salts and heavy metals like lead and mercury, pesticides, fertilizers, synthetic chemicals with carbon, plastics and rubber etc. into the water bodies. Fly ash, phosphogypsum and iron and steel slags are the major solid wastes in India. Thermal pollution of water occurs when hot water from factories and thermal plants is drained into rivers and ponds before cooling. What would be the effect on aquatic life? Wastes from nuclear power plants, nuclear and weapon production facilities cause cancers, bird defects and miscarriages. Soil and water pollution are closely related. Dumping of waste, especially glass, Harmful chemicals, industrial effluents, packaging, salts and garbage renders the soil useless. Rainwater percolates to the soil carrying the pollutants to the ground and the groundwater also gets contaminated. Noise pollution Noise pollution not only results in irritation and anger, it also causes hearing impairment, increased heart rate, and blood pressure among other physiological effects. Unwanted sound is an irritant and a source of stress. Industrial and construction activities, machinery, factory equipment, generators, saws and pneumatic and electric drills also make a lot of noise. Control of environmental degradation Every liter of wastewater discharged by our industry pollutes eight times the quantity of fresh water. How can the industrial pollution of fresh water be reduced? Some suggestions are as follows. First, minimizing use water for processing by reusing and recycling it in two or three successive stages. Second, Harvesting of rainwater to meet water requirements. Third, treating hot water and effluents before releasing them in rivers and ponds. Treatment of industrial effluents can be done in three stages. A. Primary treatment by mechanical means. This involves screening, grinding, flocculation and sedimentation. B. Secondary treatment by biological process and C. Tertiary treatment by biological, chemical and physical processes. This involves recycling of wastewater. Overdrawing of groundwater reserves by industry where there is a threat to groundwater resources also needs to be regulated legally. Particulate matter in the air can be reduced by fitting smoke stacks to factories with electrostatic precipitators, fabric filters, scrubbers and inertial separators. Smoke can be reduced by using oil or gas instead of coal in factories. Machinery and equipment can be used and generators should be fitted with silences. Almost all machinery can be redesigned to increase energy efficiency and reduce noise. 
noise absorbing material may be used apart from personal use of earplugs and earphones the challenge of sustainable development requires integration of economic development and environmental concerns figure 6.11 the picture shows sewage treatment plant under yamuna action plan at faridabad page 79 from the box ntpc shows the way ntpc is a major power providing corporation in india it has iso certification for ems that is environment management system 14001 the corporation has a proactive approach for preserving the natural environment and resource like water oil and gas and fuels in places where it is setting up power plants this has been possible through a optimum utilization of equipment adopting latest techniques and upgrading existing equipment b minimizing waste generation by maximizing ash utilization c providing green belts for nurturing ecological balance and addressing the question of special purpose vehicles for afforestation d reducing environmental pollution through ash pond management ash water recycling system and liquid waste management and e ecological monitoring reviews and online database management for all its power stations figure 6.12 shows the ramagundam plant exercises question 1 multiple choice questions one of one which of the following industries use limestone as a raw material a aluminum b cement c sugar or d jute two of one which of the following agencies market steel for the public sector plants a h a i l b s a i l c tata steel or d m n c c 3 of 1 which one of the following industries uses bauxite as a raw material a aluminum b cement c jute or d steel 4 of 1 which one of the following industries manufactures telephones computers etc a steel b electronic c aluminum or d information technology question 2 answer the following briefly in not more than 30 words 1 of 2 what is manufacturing 2 of 2 name any three physical factors for the location of industry 3 of 2 name any three human factors for the location of the industry four of two what are basic industries give an example five of two name the important raw materials used in the manufacturing of cement question 3 write the answers of the following questions in 120 words one of three how are integrated steel plants different from mini steel plants what problems does the industries face what recent developments have led to a rise in the production capacity two of three how do industries pollute the environment three of three discuss the steps to be taken to minimize environmental degradation by industries page 80 activity give one word for each of the following with regard to industry the number of letters in each word are hinted in brackets first 
used to drive machineries? The answer has five letters, and the clue letter is P. Second, people who work in a factory. The number of letters in the answer are six, and the clue letter is W. Third, where the product is sold. The answer is a six-lettered word, starting with M. Fourth, a person who sells goods. The answer starts with the letter R, and it is eight-letter word. Fifth, thing produced. The answer starts with the letter P, and there are seven letters in the answer. Sixth, to make or produce. The answer starts with the letter M, and there are eleven letters in the word. Seventh, land, water, and air degraded. The answer starts with the letter P, and there are nine letter in the word. Project work. Select one agro-based and one mineral-based industry in your area. By selecting any one agro-based. and one mineral based industry in your area and try to frame the project under the following headings first what are the raw materials they use second what are the other inputs in the process of manufacturing that involve transportation cost and third are these factories following environmental norms activity Here is a puzzle to solve having graticules each written a letter 12 columns and 12 rows are given the clues are as follows first textiles sugar vegetable oil and plantation industries deriving raw materials from agriculture are called second the basic raw material for sugar industry third this fiber is also known as the golden fiber fourth iron ore coking coal and limestone are the chief raw materials of this industry fifth a public sector steel plant located in chatisgarh sixth railway diesel engines are manufactured in uttar pradesh at this place You were just listening to chapter six, the manufacturing industries, that contained sixteen pages. Here, this chapter is concluded. This chapter was read by Shiba Mal. Thank you.